This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. and it is the Ramble. We're here until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Right now it's about six minutes past uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, excuse me, not Daylight, Standard Time. Oh boy, I can't even keep up with the time anymore. How are you? I just should say Eastern Time and you can, you know, take it from there. Anyway, hi, how are you? Welcome to our program. A little bit later, we'll uh, go to our citizens panel and see what they have to say about the day's happenings. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to sit here and blab at you for a little bit. Um, something I don't, I don't do that often, but I like to do it at least once a week now. And then I wonder, do I have 25 minutes worth of material uh, to talk to you about? Um, first of all, uh, let, me, let me say that this is GabNet. This is uh, a, a, a kind of a talk outfit. That's why we call it GabNet, okay? Uh, and not dance net or anything else. So well, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, but uh, and later on, you'll hear our citizens panel, which is more than just one person calling the talk show host. Okay, it's like upwards. We sometimes get upwards to oh, ten other people besides myself, all interacting with each other, and it's kind of an interesting and different way of doing a talk show that I thought all America would, would absolutely embrace. All these broadcast people would say. Alex, why don't you uh, let us know? How do you do this? Show us how you do it. Come, why don't you come over to our place and do it? Because this sounds interesting. I'm, we've never had talk radio like this before. But no, I didn't get any calls. Nobody seems to care that we're doing something completely different. If you stick around, if this is your, one of your first times ever having, by the way, my nose is always itching. I should never be on television. It always itches. Um, if you are listening for the first time and you've never heard the citizen panel format, it is completely different than anything you've ever heard before uh, in the uh, in in the uh, in the talk show business. Uh, it's not that same old boring talk where people uh, are uh, calling up the host and kissing his ass. You know, uh, this is like uh, 10 people, any one of which could be a conservative, a liberal, a, a libertarian, whatever have you, man, woman, child, I don't care. And they can all talk on this program. And, and it becomes a kind of a, a equal kind of discussion. And while I am very much to the left, I don't make any bones about that. People like Phil Meyer, who calls this show, uh, more than makes up for it, you know. And we have Patrick. He's a conservative as well. Uh, he uh, he makes up for it. Uh, we have other people who are very much to the left. You know, so it's not we don't sit here and beat up on the left, on the right. Uh, I don't like the right wing. I think it's you know got its problems. Although uh, Patrick, I find a very humanitarian kind of guy. It's really strange. But he's been calling me ever since Sirius XM. And uh, I was always amazed by his calls because he was to the right, but he was he had a certain sense of reasonableness about his his right wingedness. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, we have this this whole group of people, and it's different than any other kind of talk. And I got some publicity on this in like Talkers Magazine, which all the talk show people, the business people, and so on, read every day. Got two articles about this format, okay? And it, after they published them, how many calls do you think I got about the format? And about, gee, how do you do that? Would you care to embellish it more? And blah, 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 blah. Uh, zero? <laughs> zero calls. So it doesn't seem like the talk show business is desirous to do anything new than it's been doing for the last 40 years. Basically, because the broadcasters out there and the, the suits that own it don't have any real sense of imagination. You know, there was a time in my business where you tried new stuff, 
because you wanted to be the first guy on your block to do something and have people come rushing to it, and then you've got, like, the, uh, the franchise. But, nah, it's not that way anymore. Excuse me, folks. I don't know what this itchy nose is. I think it's nerves. I honestly believe. Either that or hairs. When you get older, hairs grow in places you never wanted them to grow before. I have a literal forest coming out of my ears. Okay, and then in your nose you get these hairs, and then you try to get one of these um, these uh, electric uh, devices that supposedly goes into the into the nostril and will cut the hairs down. But they they never cut anything down. They just they, they just make you feel good because they wore around. So I've got these hairs that you know make my nose itch. Anyway, uh, so what you know what is happening? that is big in the news. Uh, let me just say, and I, and I hate to bring this up again, but it is, a, a, to me, it's been my cause celebra. Don't itch your nose, Alex. Keep your hands, sit on your hands. Don't, don't do that to your nose. Um, you wonder, you know, uh, I've been talking a lot about this whole uh, accusations of harassment against one person or another. It seems to be, and somebody put me, some woman called up and kind of said, what do you mean by that? When I called it a fad, and it really kind of is in a way, but it's not a good fad, it's a bad fad. And is it a fad that uh, that, that is negative? Well, on certain levels, I think it is. On other levels, I think it's very important. I think it's important that finally somebody decided to start dealing with the casting couch that has been going on in Hollywood. Hell, when I was a kid, I heard about the casting couch, you know, and the biggies like Louis B. Mayer and Daryl F. Zanuck and uh, uh, who are some of the other big studio owners, uh, all engaged in this practice of uh, Harry Cohn, all engaged in this practice of the, uh, of the casting couch. Hey, you want to roll? You want me to make you a star? Spread your legs. And it was almost a thing that women did in those days because they knew if they didn't, they weren't going to get the treatment, okay? There were some actresses, I think, who didn't hit the casting couch and still made it because they had pure talent, but there were some less talented ones that would always subject themselves to the casting couch. And uh, I find them just as wrong as the people who employed the casting couch and offered women jobs as a result of that casting couch. There I go with my hands, itching my nose again. Uh, but they, they went along with this whole thing with the casting couch. And so I, 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 this thing went on and on and on. And so it then proliferated and kept going through the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, even uh, up until recent years when you got guys like Harvey Weinstein, who were only acting in the great tradition of the people that had been gone before him in owning studios and taking advantage of women. Now, I find the practice deplorable. I found it deplorable when I first heard about it as a kid. I find it deplorable now. Uh, women are not something to be used as a masturbatory device. Uh, women are to be used uh, as the good actresses that they are, and they should be able to... And here's the thing that bothers me. I think we probably had a lot of great actresses who fell by the wayside because they didn't spread their legs for somebody. And we lost a lot of great actors and a lot of great actresses because of the casting couch as well because they wouldn't put up with it. So uh, as how many good actors and actresses that we never heard of just kind of gave up on the whole thing because they didn't want to have to go through this process. So it was very corrosive in that respect. And it was very corrosive in respect to the fact that we then got a bunch of actors and actresses that were uh, terrible. Uh, and you wondered how the hell did they ever get in the movies? And they made them into big stars, you know. And uh, you had to say, well, maybe, who did she, the old saying was, who did she sleep with? So good actresses that could have been never came to be. And same thing with actors, because remember, there were a lot of gay people running studios as well and in the cast, able to cast or be agents or whatever uh, and get people jobs. So, you know, guys were, were, were fodder as well. 
But basically, the women were the ones that got to got to, really suffered a lot in this business over the years. And I'm just saying, we were deprived of a lot of great actresses. We will never know their names or who they were, but uh, you know, great actors and actresses because of the casting couch and because of the fact that a lot of women had to spread their legs in order to get their jobs. Um, uh, you know, I can't say who slept with who. You know, we don't know. Uh, uh, we do know that somebody like Joan Crawford uh, was, in fact, I think, a prostitute before she was an actress in movies. And Joan Crawford was no great shakes. So I don't, even though she, you know, got nominated for an Academy Award, I think for what was it that uh, Mildred Pierce. Uh, she really wasn't a very good actress, in my opinion. But it's rumored she slept like crazy with people. So that's that's how she got where she was. But she's the only one I can give you as an example. By the way, I heard a great story today. And I, I don't know if everybody's going to get this story. My friend Jack Garfine, who I've gotten to know, who is just a wonderful, wonderful person. And he, his life is like history in motion pictures and in acting, and in theater. And he was in a concentration camp on top of it. I mean, it just fascinating guy, but I also love Jack. I mean, he's a person who I just became friends with oh, maybe in the last maybe several months. And he's like 86. And, uh, you know, I it, it bothers me that I got to know him this later in life. I mean, he he's just a wonderful person. Anyway, and uh, let's mention Natalia, who is his lady, who is just a gem. And their cat, who, of course, you know the story about her. their cat, who we sat for for a week. And the cat just completely ran this apartment. But anyway, Jack told me this great story that, you know, because I asked him how he felt about the death of James Dean. Uh, because he, he was the guy who discovered James Dean. And... Um, he, he, he talked to us about James Dean's death and that, in fact, uh, James Dean was, uh, uh, was going to go to the, these races up in Northern California. And, he, and Jack said, do not race. You know, we don't want anything to happen to you. You know, your, your career is now, he just finished doing Giant. Uh, and he said, your career is going along very nicely. Don't go up there and race and get into an accident. He said, no, I'm not going to race. I'm just going to drive up there. He says, don't even drive up there. He said, you got a fast car here and I know what you're going to do. Just don't do it. And um, he said he came out and, and uh, uh, one day was over at the set where they were doing Giant and uh, yeah, uh, James Dean had this Corvair, I think it was, if I remember correctly, or maybe it was, it was a, maybe, it, maybe it was a Porsche. I think maybe it was a Porsche sitting out front. And he said, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going up to Northern California with a car. And he said, fuck you. You know, I said, do you realize the last, was the last thing you ever said to James Dean was fuck you. He said, don't do this. He said, it, it, I love you. Do not do this. You, you know, uh, I, it's not the time to take a chance with a car. Okay, your your career is on its way. You've, you know, you've done two great movies, East of Eden and uh, and whatever, and uh, and and Rebel Without a Cause, and he just finished wrapping up with uh, or wrapping close to wrapping with uh, with uh, uh, Giant, and he said, you know, this is not the time for you to do that. Well, he, he took off anyway. And that's the last he ever saw of James Dean because James Dean drove to Northern California and in the process hit a curve and, well, the rest is history. And James Dean is no longer with us. And um, he said, um, he said uh, uh, that, that he was in a screening room watching Rushes from Giant uh, with Liz Taylor and a few other people. And... Um, some guy comes into the room and he whispers something to, to Liz Taylor. And then she lets out with an absolute scream. Oh, my God. You know, and everybody turns around. What, 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 what? And the guy looks at, at them and says, Dean's dead. He had a car crash in Northern California. And he said, that's how we found out. He was one of the first people. He was the, one of the first people, the group of first people, to find out that James Dean was dead. 
But I said to him, what kind of guy was he? He says, well, you know, the one thing that bothered James Dean more than anything else was, <laughs> this is a great story. And I don't know how many people are going to get the, the, the crux of this joke, but follow it and I'll explain it. Uh, James Dean got, got his reviews for East of Eden. And he was in New York, and Jack, of course, was living in New York because he was with the actor's studio. And um, he was, uh, he suddenly saw the reviews for East of Eden, and Bosley Crowther in the, uh, in the New York Times said, uh, compared him and said, he's another Marlon Brando. He's like Marlon Brando. You know, he's a Marlon Brando type actor, whatever. And he got very upset by this. He says, I don't want to be compared to Brando. I don't want to be compared to anybody. So he says, I feel terrible about this. Who can I call to kind of calm me down? He says, well, call Lee Strasberg at the, at the actor's studio, Jack told him. He said, Lee, Lee, Lee always has good advice, okay? So he calls up Strasberg, and uh, he finally gets off the phone with Strasberg, and, and Jack says, well, what did he say? He said, well, at least he didn't compare you to, um, oh, now I forget, um, oh, to, to, okay, at least he didn't, I'm fucking this up, at least he didn't compare you to Mel Ferrer. Uh, now, Mel Ferrer was married to Audrey Hepburn, and he was a mediocre actor at best, but I just found that a funny joke, funny story. Okay, well. There are a lot of people listening to this. Jeez, almighty, amazed how many people are, are checking in on me talking like this. Anyway, so where, what is this? Where, where, is, where was I going with this? I just, because I spent the time with Jack today in Shecky, uh, we, uh, uh, I just, I heard several, a lot of stories and it was on my mind, but I was talking about the casting couch and about the way things were. And, uh, you know, it was always a terrible thing. It was always a terrible thing. But, uh it was considered part of the process. So what happens now is that, yes, uh, you know, when they outed Harvey Weinstein, I don't think that, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and convict Harvey of anything because I'm fairer than that, but it looks like Harvey Weinstein was a pretty terrible person when it came to women sexually and in trying to hold up the possibility of a job for them. Uh, and... Uh, he, um, um, uh, Tim, don't, don't keep sending stuff to me while I'm trying to talk here, okay? All right, hold on. I got I to gotta click something here. So I, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so I was talking about uh, uh, that it, 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 in the case of Harvey, it was very real, okay? And that kind of brought on the braveness of, uh, of yet another person to come out and tell stories about uh, Kevin Spacey. Uh, two people who, by the way, weren't liked by their peers. And, and so when it finally came to their fall, nobody was there to catch them, all right? So I understand that. Then they finally got a, a couple of others, and you got John Heilman, the, he, they, somebody outed him. Six women said that he had been, he'd been pestering them. And, uh, you know, we, we went from rape to just accusations that he patted me on the ass. I think we have a, I have a story here today, or I did have it, I didn't look at it, about, um, uh, oh, I don't have it here, about a, a Herbert Walker Bush, okay, H.W. Bush, here, uh, yeah, anyway, Daddy Bush, oh, no, no, son, the son, Bush, H.W., and he said, they said it never happened, but, you know, uh, again, this was just, he patted me on the ass. Hey, have you ever been through an Italian railroad station as a woman? My ex-wife, one time we were in Italy, and she had to go into the, she had to go mail something at the post office or something, or no, the train station. And she went in the train station, and she came back, and she said, I think my ass is black and blue. She says, I walked through the train station. Guys kept pinching my ass. And finally, I asked an Italian, why do you guys do this? They said, oh, that's a compliment. Well, today, you know, uh, to me, that's abuse, okay? That's harassment. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that, you know, you had a culture there that countenanced it. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying that to put, for instance, we then got to Louis C.K. Louis C.K. was accused of asking a bunch of women who were with him 
I, I'm going to pull my dick out. Does anybody mind? Uh, and then he pulled it out. Nobody said no, I guess. And he pulled it out and he started jerking off. And so, of course, this story hits the boards and Netflix drops him. HBO drops him out of everything that he's ever done for them. Uh, FX has dropped all his shows and his participation. And not, not the shows, but his participation in them. Uh, and uh, it was one thing after another. Okay. Uh, this is quite a quite a deal, quite a deal, and yet Louis C.K. was being put in the same category as a Harvey Weinstein, which kind of minimizes what Harvey did. You know what Harvey did, if all of it is true, was absolutely unconscionable. It included everything from coercion to exposing himself, to rape, okay? It's not exactly just pulling your dick out and asking first if you can do it, you know? And yet Louis C.K.'s career may well be over. Well, there's a comedian by the name of Bill Burr, and everybody I've ever known who knows Bill Burr really respect him as a comic. I've never watched him much. I haven't watched a lot of comedy lately, but what I've seen of Bill Burr, he's very good. And he doesn't think Louis C.K.'s career is over. After admitting to masturbating in front of a couple of women, C.K. Uh, was dropped by his agent, uh, publicist, and uh, manager Dave Becky, who represents Burr. It's such a crazy time right now. He says, I love C.K., and that was obviously just a fucking hard thing to see happen to somebody. Uh, he was definitely 100% wrong. I'll just say this. He was 100% wrong. But he did own up to it, and I think he will definitely be back. Though Burr conceded that C.K. was 100% wrong, and the F is for family, uh, and the F is for family creator took issue with the backlash C.K. 50 received in comparison to other celebrities. Okay, this is it, including Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey, who were accused of sexual assault. Okay. So he's saying he, 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 the kind of reaction he received in comparison to those people was not, uh, not, a, not a good thing. All right. So now we, get, we go further with this whole thing. All right. Um, Burr uh, said, uh, it doesn't make a difference of sexual misconduct all the way to sexual assault and rape. You're getting the same exact level of punishment. Ah, Burr said the aftermath of the CK scandal, that's only my question out of all of this. It, he was definitely wrong, obviously, but does the punishment match the crime? Burr also was unmoved by the increasing pressure on other comedians to fire Becky, as CK's Better Things partner Pamela Adlin did upon learning that the sexual misconduct allegations were true. I stand by my fucking manager. I'm never firing the guy Burr fumed. I've been with this guy since 2006. Dave Becky is one of the great people I've met in this business. I wouldn't be surprised if the media goes after CK's mailman saying, if you're delivering his mail, then you're part of the problem. Good for you, Burr. Burr, terrific. Terrific. Well, well stated. Now we get down to the big news of the day. It finally had hit Capitol Hill. Uh, Al Franken... Yes, I just said Al Franken, so you know what's coming. The former Saturday Night Live personality turned U.S. Senator from Minnesota is calling for an ethics investigation into his own behavior. After being accused of kissing and groping a woman without her consent during a USO tour in 2006. Now, you must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. No, uh, you must remember this. Franken was not a senator in 2006. He was on a USO tour with a, uh, a host, uh, a woman that's now a television host and sports broadcaster. Back then, I think she was a former playmate, but I may be mistaken. But her name is Leanne Tweeden, and she accused Franken of improprieties, including groping her breast while she was asleep on a military plane. Uh, the photo of that groping incident uh, has been making the rounds on Twitter and other social media outlets, and I will show it to you now. Now, this is this is Al Franken, okay, groping um, Leanne Tweeden. She's asleep, as you can see there, 
uh, I have blown it up a little bit so that you see where his hands are. Now, my question is, are his hands exactly on her tits, or is just kind of like miming it for a photograph? He probably thought it'd be really funny. What we'll do is, uh, while she's asleep, I'll put my hands there, you take a picture, and then when she wakes up, we'll show her the picture, you know? And uh, I'm just asking you, is that really groping? I mean, uh, uh, I... I I don't, it, when you compare this again, you know, it's, it's like Bill Burr said, you know, how do you compare this to, you know, Harvey Weinstein? How do you, comp you know, what, what is the level of sin involved in what he's doing? Now, obviously, it's not nice. It's nothing that I would do. It's nothing you would probably do. But is it enough to completely chastise this guy. And remember, again, he doesn't even have to hold up for a Senate investigation because he wasn't a senator at this point. He was doing nothing to discredit the United States Senate. But, you know, he probably, I would say Franken as a comedian thought this was a funny joke. And then when they all, when she woke up, they would, or when they, in those days, I think they had to develop the pictures. When they developed the pictures, uh, she would be laughing. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking, but he certainly wasn't doing it to get a heart on. OK, so it's not even a sexual act. I mean, if he wasn't doing this to arouse himself and to give himself a, a boner, then I don't think. And I, I have a great question as to whether this is uh, is is kind of in question. OK. All right. I'll let you look at it a moment longer. Uh, yeah. And she's out like a light there. You know, but uh, all of a sudden this Leanne Tweeden decides that what she's going to do is she's going to make a big deal out of it. And she releases the photo and she tells the story and all of that. Now, ask yourself this question. Some of these people who are now claiming sexual whatever, including the guy, I'm trying to remember his name now, who was on Star Trek uh, Discovery. Uh, who uh, accused uh, Kevin Spacey. He was the big guy accusing Kevin Spacey of assaulting him when he was a child actor on Broadway. Um, the question is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, are these people perhaps the ones that are already in the limelight looking for a little more limelight? I mean, why did she bring this up now? Why did she make a big deal out of it now? Oh, cause, because it's, it's uh, uh, Me Too? Because it's the hashtag Me Too? And now you want to say, I'm brave now and I'm telling the story? This went on in 2006. That's 11 years ago. And you didn't mention it? And she said, well, she didn't mention it because somebody said if they brought it up because he was a biggie in TV that she'd never work in this business again. And I, I, I don't know that I totally agree with that but you know i mean um i think we have to to a certain extent uh say to these women okay well your timidity wasn't exactly a brave action you could have stopped a lot of this stuff by making a big deal out of it then all right so uh i'm i'm not it's not that i'm i'm you know i'm not trying to excuse any of this behavior uh, it's not a behavior I would have any part in. And as a male, I don't find it funny. I don't find it interesting. And I think it's wrong. But nevertheless, um, uh, I, I, I question the severity of the action compared to the severity of the others. And if you, for instance, uh, you know, uh, it's put this on, give it this the same weight that you give Harvey Weinstein then you're saying that taking a photograph like that is as bad as rape. And it's not, okay? And let's not diminish rape. Rape is an act of complete violence against a woman. It's because you hate women, not because you're horny for them. You want to demean them. That's why you do Well, anybody that would have sex with uh, Harvey would be demeaned, you know. All I'm saying is, is that... Uh, I think that, and, and in a statement today, Franken said, I understand why we need to listen and believe women's experiences. I'm asking that an ethics investigation be undertaken. Uh, he, uh, clear, he said um, he should not have taken the photo saying it was clearly intended to be funny. 
He followed up with a more definitive apology today after receiving negative feedback. He said, the first and most important thing, and if it's the only thing I care to hear, that's fine, is I'm sorry. I respect women. I don't respect men who don't. And the fact that my own actions have given people a good reason to doubt, that makes me feel ashamed. Okay? So I think it was a good statement made by him. Um, here's another incident that happened today. Um, a legendary Hollywood actor, Sylvester Stallone, star of Rocky and Rambo films, is still under fire over an incident that took place in Las Vegas while he was filming Over the Top in 1986. A, a UK publication reports that Stallone is accused of sexually assaulting a 16-year-old girl. According to the report, a girl filed a police report at the time alleging that Stallone and his bodyguard forced the girl to perform oral sex on them and then threatened to beat her head in if she told anyone. Police report notes the girl decided not to press charges at the time because she was frightened and felt humiliated. But the Stallone people came up with their answer. Um, the report quotes Stallone a sp a spokeswoman, well, to begin with, the representative for Stallone said the alleged incident never happened. The report quotes Stallone spokeswoman Michelle Bega as saying, this is a ridiculous, categorically false story. No one was ever aware of this story until it was published today, including Mr. Stallone, and at no time was Mr. Stallone ever contacted by authorities or anyone else regarding this matter. The story is based on a police report filed at the time in Las Vegas in which the unnamed girl alleges that she, he, she was formed to perform, that she was forced to perform oral sex on Stallone and his bodyguard. This story could be an absolute lie, okay? And let's assume for a moment that it is. This girl walked into a police station. She, you know, who knows why she would do it, but she accused Sylvester Stallone of a heinous, horrible act. Now, who are you going to believe? Well, I think the first person you're probably going to believe is the woman. Why? That's the way we're doing things these days. But it could be Stallone didn't do any of this. And there's no proof that he did. And uh, uh, the police never charged him with anything. And he was never contacted. And he never knew the incident even really was, was, was reported. So uh, you have to ask the question, is, is this a real is this a real story, you know, and is it true? And then what effect does it have on Stallone's career? Because to some people, they go, oh, you remember that incident where that girl accused him of, of, of raping her? And, you know, it, it just it, these things go on and on and on and on and on. And I just, uh, um, I think it's, it's wrong, and I think that uh, we should not ever countenance this sort of action. But on the other hand, we have to start being careful now that good people aren't besmirched by people who are lying. And the pe if there are people out there who are lying, and I'm sure there are going to be some that are going to be found to be lying, then what it does is it takes all the other women's accounts and reports and so on and diminishes them. So let's not, let's not have a McCarthy-esque uh, purge here on everybody that gets accused of, of harassment. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, it's funny. I mean, I hate to say this, and, and some people will find this offensive when I say it, but, you know, harassment is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, one person's uh, pat on the ass is another person's attack, okay? Um, I, you know, I, I grabbed my wife's tit tonight, and I said, are you going to charge me with harassment now? You know. But anyway, I, and, and to all those guys who might be watching who think that what I'm saying is, okay, go ahead, have a good time. No, I'm not saying that at all. What Harvey Weinstein did, what Kevin Spacey did, if true, if true, I have to always throw that in there, if true, are just absolutely objectionable. And what several other people have do, done, what John Heilman was uh, concern, considered to do, wasn't as bad as Harvey, wasn't as bad as Kevin, but it was not good, okay? And then you get down to Louis C.K., and quite frankly, I think the main person embarrassed in that whole thing was Louis C.K. because he pulled his dick out and everybody had a good look and probably should have started laughing. Um, I, you know, it, I just, it, we cannot treat these all with the same 
brush, okay? And in the case of Al Franken, he thought it was a funny picture he took. Shall I show it to you one more time, just in case you, you, uh, you uh, wonder about that picture? There it is. Wait a minute. There it is, okay? Uh, he thought this was funny. Look at him. He's got a smile on his face. She's out like a light. Um, and uh, uh, they were on a USO tour. That's why she's dressed up in... Uh, in a flak jacket and a helmet and all of that. But uh, yeah, and, and you could say it was in bad taste, but when he did it, probably not considered in as bad taste as it would be today. You know, times change too. But I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to excuse what he did. All I'm saying is it doesn't look like he's doing that to get a heart on, okay? All right, he's doing that to get a laugh. And that's what he did with his career. His whole career was, you know, attempting to make people laugh. Well, listen, I've talked a lot tonight, um, but we also had our largest numbers we've ever had on, on online with the video. So I'm more than happy to start taking uh, uh, your calls here. I have opened up the lines so that people can call me and uh, can uh, um, um, check in to see, uh, be part of the citizen panel. So our lines are now open and I'm waiting for people to start calling. Our, um, our Skype number, if you use Skype, which we suggest you do, and if you don't know where to get Skype, just go over to gabnet.net, and over on the right-hand side of the page, it's a complete primer on how to get onto this program using Skype. It also has a phone number there in case you just want to use your telephone. Okay, you can do that too. But we prefer you use Skype because we can see you, and the people out there can see you. And uh, we can hear you very, very well because it's a very clear sounding process. Uh, and uh, yeah, our, um, our ID is uh, GabNet Live. GabNet Live. That's what you use to call us and to talk to us about, uh, about stuff. So the lines are open now. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So this is where I sit and I wait for the first call to call. There we go. The first one tonight is Mike. Uh, okay, uh, yes, uh, hello there, Mike, how are you? Uh, wait a minute, we, uh, good, do, do we have good. his picture? Wait a minute, we'll get his picture. See that little thing whirling around, folks? That means it's trying to, there it goes. We got his picture. Yeah. Now, what happened to your lights? Oh, it's just having a look one of those days. One of those days? Oh, okay. Anyway, how you doing, Mike? Good. My mom made some homemade pea soup today. Okay, so I hadn't had that in years. Boy, it was good. My wife makes pea soup all the time. With she, bacon in it? Oh, everything. She's she makes great pea soup. You know, oh. it's like her her uh, her uh, tour de force when it comes to cooking. Hello there, Phil. Hey, good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? Huh? I'm fine. I'm just fine. Oh, let me make sure the monitor rig. Uh, Speakers are off. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I listened to your uh, monologue, mm -hmm. and uh, I looked at the picture, and you know what? It didn't look like Al Franken was doing anything. I don't think he was getting a boner out of it. Let me uh, put it that uh, way. No. Yeah. Now, you know, was it in bad taste? As you said, in today's world, it's considered in bad taste. Would it have been? Let me put it this way. If I had shown you that picture here in 2006... Would we consider it in bad taste? Would anybody, even the women listening, would they call no. me up and go, "Me too"? No, it, it looked it looked like the standard joke. I remember at my college radio station, we all posed uh, in our underwear uh, with album covers in, in front of us yeah. and uh, took a, took a group picture. And you know, with with you know, it was no more in bad taste doing that. Than it was what Al Franken did. I, I thought it, I thought it was funny. Well, I don't know that it's funny. I mean, it, let me put it this way: everything, everything that happens in life, we have to take in context of the time, uh, or what we would call the zeitgeist. That's, that means the tempo of the times. And today's in today's world, no, that is objectionable. Okay, but it was you know was it objectionable in two thousand six? It's kind of like the question. Yes, we all know slavery is horrible, but in the late 1700s, was it? You yeah, know, well, I mean, I, I I listen to we learn, uh, we learn, we learn our morality, and you can't, you know, to say to somebody that 
Franken, you took that picture in 2006 when nobody would have paid attention to it except saying, that's a really funny picture. She was asleep and he was took this picture of pretending to grope her. Yeah. Um, and you can is see it's kind of like is kind of like saying back in the in the in the in the uh, witch hunting eras in uh, in the 50s for communists that because somebody was a communist back in the 30s that he was still suspect at that point you get what i'm saying well he was uh, but, <laughs> 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 but you, you know what i'm to, saying uh you know the the gal who was in the picture uh, I, I listened to her today uh, in the news, and she basically said, hey, you know, he apologized. I accept his apology. I'm not looking for anything from it. Uh, then why did she Why did she make a big deal out of it? That's my I question. Don't know, I don't know that she made a big deal out of it, and I'm not. No, she was willing to go on her radio station and talk about it. She, she said she felt creeped out by it. Well, no, but you see, here's the point. If you forgive the guy. Then you mm -hmm. shouldn't go on the air and talk about it. You know, you got your apology. You should feel satisfied with that. Why do you suddenly decide to do it? I think, quite frankly, she's a political. She's a, she's a publicity whore. Well, I uh, somebody you know? said that she's right wing, but I, I tell you something. She's good looking, and and she has. Well, that has nothing to do you know, with it. Too. You know, I hate it when good looking people get away with shit. Yeah. Okay, but. Uh, well, that's because we never get any any. Uh, yeah. we don't get but, away with but it. But I mean, I mean, uh, you know, she she, I, she 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 it seems like a publicity whore. Why is she doing this now for this reason? You know, and, and and her it, thing diminishes all the other claims, which are very valid. You know, yeah. Uh, obviously, over the years, there's been uh, uh, a a bunch of this kind of activities going on. It's just now people are holding people accountable to activities that would have been acceptable. Yeah, yes, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. In the 50s, you had people who were communists in the 30s because it was a fad to be a communist in the 30s. And by the time they got to the 50s, they were the furthest thing from communists. I mean, Ronald Reagan became a conservative and he was a communist, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yet these people were being made to account for their actions 15, 20 years prior. And it's it's beca because the morality changed, the scare tactics of the day changed. Well, the morality today is a little different than when Al Franken did that action, yeah. you know. And, and he was a comedian. And y you know what? Uh, comedians uh, do stuff like that. Well, I mean, you got Louis C.K. pulling his dick out. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it was, did he think he was being funny when he did it? I don't know. I, I've heard from a lot of people, uh, in the business that he was known for doing that. Okay. So he yeah. had been doing that activity for quite a while, but all of a sudden everybody, everybody's looking for somebody to blame. And, you know, I mean, uh, when you get down to Sylvester Stallone actually being charged, uh, told about something that he never even heard about from the police. He never even was investigated in, in, in the action. Anybody can walk into a police station. You know that. You're, you work with the police. Anybody can walk into a police station and say, I was raped by so-and-so. But that doesn't mean so-and-so raped her. Yeah. You know, no. it doesn't mean, I, it, and it know, doesn't mean he... It doesn't mean because of his notoriety that he didn't, you know, right. I mean, you investigate it. Right. And I suppose uh, after uh, investigating, they found that, uh, b b b you know, baseless. Yeah. Well, the Sylvester Stallone thing, uh, there was more to the woman's statement. She said that she was there and wanted to be there. She, she was given a key, went in and the other guy, the, uh, the bodyguard was in the bathroom or something. Yeah. And, when he came out, uh, she said Stallone suggested that she take them both, and she didn't want that. And then uh, they seem to, uh, she says they forced themselves on her, and that's what uh, she was uh, pissed about. Well, but she said she would have been totally uh, consensual if it was just yeah, Stallone. But any, anybody can, the claim can be made against anybody. You know, right. you, and I'm, you know, as I say, um, uh, I had a few problems where people had said false things about me, but I was able to easily disprove it because I was somewhere else at the time, you know. But because I was on the radio, I was, uh, I, I was a target. I was an absolute target. 
and for no reason at all, because quite frankly, I would never engage in any of this kind of behavior. It's just not right so far as I'm concerned. You know, even what Al Franken did is not something I would do. You know, I might I might have a friend and he's asleep and I might, you know, take a marker and put a dick on his <laughs> face, a mustache, or, on, a mustache on him or a dick on his face or something like that. You know, but I I certainly wouldn't do anything like that to a woman, you know, so he, he, I'm not he standing up it. for it. I don't think he did anything, you know. Uh, I can't see. Just, I can't see from the picture, like and I'll show the picture again to the audience. I can't see where he's really got his hands on her breast. He, uh, you can see that there's a space between his hands and the breast. Well, we, we, we don't know that, but uh, at least the left hand, it looks like he's not exactly touching her, and that's a flak jacket. You really couldn't right. feel anything and, through that anyway. And the right hand, if he isn't touching her. Uh, you couldn't tell because of the angle of the photo. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just the way photography but, works. But he, you know, he owned up to it. He owned up to the fact that the picture was taken. He said as a joke. And he's willing to, you know, let them hold an investigation. But they shouldn't actually hold an investigation because he wasn't a senator when he did this. Uh, yeah, although I don't think it matters if... Uh, if there was a, a he, if he accosted somebody and it was uh, you know considered uh, uh, not rape but you know considered uh, uh, aggressive or, or whatever, uh, even though he wasn't a senator at the time, neither was this judge uh, Roy uh, Moore. Uh, what he wasn't a senator at the time either. But no, but and, and they've been and arguing that. Somebody said that they should hold a congressional investigation into Roy Moore, and somebody even on MSNBC said, well, how can you do that? He's not a member of the Senate. You know. Right. But they're saying that if he does get elected... Well, then, then, they can, then they can say, well, you know, he doesn't have the moral character to be a senator, and they could then hold an investigation. But first I, he has I'd to say, win, and it, he does, it doesn't look like he's going to do that. Well, you, you can't believe the polls anymore. Uh, because uh, you know, hey, if the polls were hey, right. What would you think? Let be honest, Phil. And you're the you're the right winger here. What do you think of the people of Alabama if they were to real if they were to elect this guy? Uh, I, I I swing two ways. One is uh, you don't convict a guy uh, uh, on a hearsay. Well, this and isn't you, a lot of this. You know, there's too much of these stories coming out on this guy. I understand, but you know, uh, are they politically yeah. motivated? Uh, and and was uh, this um, other one on Al Franken was that politically motivated? Well, it, you said uh, she's known to be a conservative. Uh, somebody on your uh, Facebook thing said uh, that she's a card carrying right winger. Who who said that? John Ryan. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I I don't know. I I just thought she was hot. <laughs> you know, and, well, yeah. But uh, so what? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I, you know, you know, I mean, not... and and she, I think she had been a playmate or something at one point too. Yeah, she looked like she could have been. She had yeah, yeah, great, she had she been a play people. a playmate, and uh, I think that's the reason she was on the USO tour, not because she, she was looks a sports better now than she looked in that picture. Well, she's asleep there, and she's wearing a flag jacket and a helmet. Come on, you know, I saw pictures of her later on that tour. And she looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you know, but that that is little or no credence at all. You know, I mean, we what? Why are we? Why are you saying that she's uh, good looking? Because that then excuses Franken's act? No, it has nothing it, to know. do with Franken. I was just pleased with uh, with uh, her appearance. Yeah, you know, I would have hit on her too. <laughs> you, you would hit on her too. Oh yeah. Oh really? Okay. Well, that's our that's our uh, that's our guy. Uh, yeah, I've got a that a, fact. Uh, she might have been your type. Maybe she wasn't heavy enough, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Zoftik, but she was kind of sort of your type, at least today. I, I guess. You know, she's kind of my type, you know. But uh, anyway, I just had to redo my uh, my camera, which decided to freeze on me. Um, so, but I caught it early, so. Yeah. You know. So, uh where are, uh, again... Where, where is where, anybody oh, tonight? Yeah, I know, with uh, with such high uh, numbers listening... Yeah, yeah uh, well, I had, it's, we, I had the highest numbers tonight watching at one time, 
at least if you believe this little counter here, which I don't <laughs> believe because I do a show and it says like 15 people watching, 15 people watching, and then at the end of the night, they give me the grand total and it's something like 400. You know, right. so I come in and they go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, at one point here, we had like 25 people were uh, that were mentioned here. That's the highest we've ever gotten, by the way, really? on that thing. So, we've had a lot of people watching. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Good. How is everybody? Yeah. Did you watch? Good. Did you Good. watch the picture of Al Franken? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Alleged groping. Yeah, I listened to you uh, from the beginning. Yeah, so, did, did, uh, does it look like he was actually, like he was doing it to get no. off or anything else? No, I don't think he was even touching. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I would say that if I were if I were a guy, let's say they did something to me, painted a mustache on me. Of course, that would be hard to do. Uh, but they, they put a dick on my forehead with a, with a China marker. And then they took a photograph of it. And I woke up and I saw that. I'd laugh. You know. Right. Yeah, you got me. This thing wasn't, it, you know, it all depends. I mean, uh, I, think, I think she's playing it up more than she was really bothered by it. Because I think she wants the fucking publicity. What was her uh, claim to fame, other than being a Playboy bunny, for her to be on that USO tour. Well, that is, I think, the reason she was on that USO right. tour. So, therefore, if you're going to make a joke, uh, you know, like Franken did, you would uh, exploit that, you know, that's why she was there, you know. Uh, she was a set of tits and legs. And, yeah, and, um, and usually what happened was you used to send people on USO tours, Bob Hope did, brought them, because they were tits and ass. <laughs> Okay, right. and the guys could go, oh, look what I'm missing at home, you know, which I thought was cruel to the troops, if you want my opinion. They always said, what a wonderful guy Bob Hope was. He'd bring Ann Margaret, where Ann Margaret wearing a skimpy outfit and put her on stage, and all the guys would ogle at her and all of that. And I'm saying to myself, God, you know, if I hadn't seen, you know, been been with a woman in, in a year because I was in the military, the last thing I want is some woman up there to give me a heart on. It's a live basically you know in the uh, world war ii pinups were very uh posters were very popular uh you know of uh, amongst the troops from what i understand well the betty grable poster for instance yeah. was yeah, probably exactly. the most like, reproduced photograph planes. in world war ii yeah right painted it on the sides of airplanes and uh so you know basically the the uso hope show was um was a continuation of that. yeah i just I, ju I just found that kind of cruel if you want my opinion. And, and it was the exploitation of women as well. Yeah, but they enjoyed it, you know. And uh, yeah, But you know something? If we were doing this show back in the 50s, and I said yeah. Bob Hope was exploiting women by taking them on these USO tours, you would all say to me, Alex, you're just out of it. Mm -hmm. Fuck off, you know. But today, mm -hmm. if I say it, there are a lot of women out there who will call me up and say, thank God, Alex, I've been waiting for somebody to say Bob Hope was exploiting women in those USO tours. <laughs> You know, yeah. so but we can't judge what somebody did in 2006 by the morality of 2017. And we can't judge 2006 by the morality of, you know, of something some guy did in the 70s. Yes, Jeff. Well, the other thing is the woman was was being paid to do that job. Uh, I think they're volunteers. No, they're volunteers going. with the USO. I'm thinking about the uh, the stuff from the 50s or. Or whatever. Oh, the pinup stuff. Pinup stuff and and yeah. the shows that uh, Bob Hope did. Those were volunteer. And everyone in all. I time? believe so. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Alex wasn't all USO. U.S. Uh, all the USO tours were voluntary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of them did it because they wanted to make Bob happy. Yeah. You know, uh, and Bob didn't make any money off of them. I I s sincerely doubt that he did. You know. Um, but after a while, let me say this, okay, after a while, it became a profit center for him because what happened was by doing it, he got the publicity that gave the rest of his career credence because the only thing at that, at a certain point that he was known for were the USO tours. And when, and when then he would do uh, an NBC special of his USO tour, uh, Bob Hope's USO tour, blah, 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 blah. He got paid for those. Yeah, right. You know. Big time. Mm -hmm. Did it? Did it raise money so he could put on more USO tours? No, USO paid paid for those tours. Yeah, but I'm wondering. No, if those... the USO paid for those tours. Yeah, 
you know. And so they and, paid for everything then. USO, I think they paid for everything. They they did the you know the the military gave him the transportation, you know it was all paid, bought and paid for. But when it came to showing those shows on NBC, I'm sure that's when he made money because there were advertisements on it. You know, oh, well, it wasn't yeah. like NBC was showing them free of charge. I'm just wondering whether some of the income went back to uh continuing the uso shows but what we're saying is is that 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 we don't hold bob hope to that higher level of truth you know and and fealty that we that we apply to these guys now so don't soon. what was that i don't know uh we will hold him accountable soon uh you know i think bob hope groped uh himself and uh Therefore, it's, you know, somebody's going to complain. Who knows about any of these people? You know, uh, um, you know, uh, here, here we've got a guy like Donald Trump, for instance, who's not being held responsible in all of this for the actions he took, which are quite numerous. And he has been on numerous occasions sued for sexual harassment. Uh, and none of these things are being brought to light about our president. I don't know why he's getting a pass on this deal. Well, he says he uh, didn't do it. He, well, know, yeah, he, yeah, and Putin says he didn't uh, uh, he, he yeah, didn't uh, no. interrupt in the election. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I saw and he a, him. I saw a guy today on TV, a Russian, who was saying in that building there, I I put out a lot of uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, false uh, uh, I was a troll. Right. literally on the internet uh, for the Russian government and all of it was being orchestrated by the Kremlin mm. you know so at least one guy a Russian guy knows it you know but yeah I, uh, did you see today they're they're building a 12 mile long bridge uh, from uh, the uh, 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 Russia to uh, Crimea uh, because uh, and, and uh, that's going to withstand. Well, well that, that, that bridge goes over the Crimea River. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Crimea River. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, what they're saying is that there's no way that with all of this investment that Russia is going to give Crimea back to the Ukraine. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. in any event, all I'm saying is, is that we have to, we have to, uh, uh, and are the, uh, where's Renee tonight? This is a discussion she should be part of. Absolutely. You know? yeah, I agree with you. Uh, uh, you know, where's Amy? She should be part of this. Uh, because, I mean, we, we, we can't apply the same standard, you know. Uh, it's like when they say, well, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Well, he owned slaves when you could own slaves. And he, he didn't see anything. He may have seen something wrong with it personally because he didn't treat his slaves sh like shit. He married one of them. Like, he didn't marry one of them, but he had uh, uh, an ongoing relationship with one uh, for, for, for years. Uh, but you can't hold that because uh, against him 200 years hence. You know, I mean, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Jeff. Well, I, I'm very disappointed about Franklin, uh, Frank. quite frankly, because I like him a lot as a senator. And... Uh, you know, as a comedian, yeah, he was kind of okay. I mean, he wasn't the, the best in the world, but he wasn't the worst, you know. But as far as a senator, he was very interesting. And, and you know, the guy is a smart person. Well, you know, you, you, research. yeah, a lot of people would like to question his motivations and so on and so forth. But what he talked about and the things he stood up for were all correct, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm disappointed. I thought he was a guy who potentially could run for vice president or president in, in the future. Well, uh, forget that oh. now. You know? I know. That's, and, and, yeah. and, and this shouldn't, to begin with, I just think this is such a minor incident that to, to make such a big deal out of it, the only people that are making a big deal out of it is the right wing who likes to see him fall. Uh, uh, I don't here, think here, so. here comes, here, here comes Renee. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me have to add her to the group. Uh, there we go. Hello, Renee. We're glad you joined us because uh, we needed we needed your input into this discussion. You know, well, it's funny because you're trying to add some balance to it, but you keep saying uh, the same. Would you, would you thing. do me a favor, uh, Jeff? Move towards the center of the I'm coming, screen. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, the reason. <laughs> don't say that. You know, you may, you may accuse me of harassing you. 
the wine spectator put out its so this is the funniest so i subscribe to one magazine you have to you have to move over towards the center because my picture in my little picture in the bottom of the screen is uh, uh, just move the camera you can move the camera a little bit you know well it's a computer I mean, it's the whole thing. Well, the screen, you can kind of just, so, yeah, you can. Anyway, uh, anyway. so, sort of. Yeah. Um, you, there are different degrees. Some of this is assault. Some of it is rape. Some of it is malicious. Some of it is not. Some of it is just bad judgment. I, I, well, where, 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 let, me ask, let me ask you this question. Where would you put Frankens? Because what I would call it is hanky-panky. Well, okay, so number one is, it is possible that she just wanted an apology from him. Well, she got one, I think. I think. Yeah, and she said, I accept it. So, no foul. Yeah. See you later. You know? Exactly. So, and, and so it's kind of, it's, it's really cool that he said, this is the standard I hope to set now. So you can definitely go ahead and look into the situation because I don't want to be known for this. Well, you know, there are, there are stupid things we do in our lifetime, you know, and, sure. and, and we do them based upon the morality of the moment, you know. And when he did that, I don't think most people, most people would look at that photograph and laugh, okay, to be honest with you. No, you were right the first time. Most people will look at that photograph and say it's very juvenile. And oh, yeah, but, uh, really yeah, uh, I no, 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 I, no disagreement there. What I said, it was hanky-panky, you know. Yeah. Uh, but so, when, when we give it the same weight as we do all these other cases, what does that say about all those others? Don't we diminish what, them in a way? Mean, those people are going to go to court. Same weight. It's not the same weight. Well, but yeah. but but we yeah. listen. You know, it's like Bill Burr said. He said Louis C.K. is suffering as much as if he had done what Harvey Weinstein did. No, I don't think so. Oh, what do you mean? He lost so. HBO, Netflix. His manager dropped him. Uh, on and on and on. All did the they, business did they limit. out of the academy? Did they? Uh, well, I, I, they, I, 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 not yet. Not, not yet. No. I mean, come on. That's minor. That's not. That's not. Uh, yeah, that's not what makes of, him a living. Okay, being a member of the academy doesn't make you a living. Hey, what, what, what? Look at Michael Richards. Uh, now his career went in the toilet. Uh, be, because of uh, what he did in a stand-up thing, even though it wasn't directed against women, uh, it was directed was against blacks. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that was not an overreaction? I think people overreact uh, at all levels. And, Phil, uh, so, Phil, tell me, tell me now. Are you standing behind the pedophile? Which is the pedophile? Uh, <laughs> so many of them. Yeah. Which pedophile for the yeah, Republican? Yeah. Pedophile. Is that like the on the wall. Which one? Oh, she made a joke Roy Moore is what she's referring to. Yeah, and so oh. one, more, one more statement. I have done many things in the shopping center. I've done drugs. I've been drunk. <laughs> I've grown up. I've shopped too much. I've shopped too little. I've stared at men. I've stared at women. I've done a lot of stuff in a shopping center. Have you tried to have sex in a mall yet? No, but I've never been kicked out of one. So what is it that, that you think, out of all the things that you could name that you've ever done in a shopping center, none of them would have gotten you kicked out? So uh, what is it that you have to be? You have to be a pedophile. Not, nothing would have gotten me kicked out, but the guy was never convicted of being a pedophile. No, but he was banned from a mall because they were suspicious so, so, of his actions. So they were suspicious. But that has nothing to do with Phil. Whether, would you vote yeah. for this guy? Would you vote for this guy? If you get kicked out of a mall, that's it. You're through. You're out. Yeah, you know, that's the ultimate diss. You know, <laughs> you you're bad for the rest of the <laughs> rest of the mall. Come into this, uh, what, what, what do they sell at malls? Uh, uh, you know, this uh, cookie shop. You can't oh, I used to go to the Orange Julius. And they they do a lot of things in malls. They watch movies. Each parking space brings okay. in X amount well, of dollars. Malls are huge. So for you to get kicked out, you had to be doing something pretty fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've walked exactly. into a mall in five years. And really, would you want to? Would you want to? Yeah. Would you want to? Would, would you want to vote for somebody who dresses up like Woody from Toy Story? You know, yeah, yeah. That's, a, <laughs> that's the only way that guy would get in there, Alex. Hey, I, no, no, Tony would vote for him if he dressed like Woody. No, I wouldn't vote for him if I had a rap sheet. Like that. That's not really. But he doesn't. Fair. Want to okay, do so that's, 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 so where, 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 Renee, on the great pantheon of uh, 
Me Too's. Uh, do you place Al Franken's action? <gasps> yeah, I was going to tell you, Frank, I'm cool now. I think she wanted everybody to know, and I think she wanted an apology, and she got exactly what she wanted, and she's going to go back. I don't think it's... I don't think it's large. I think it was offensive. It wasn't funny. It was very juvenile. So we don't know what's going through her head. And she seems to be very yeah. happy with the apology. Uh, yes, uh, um, uh, our dear friend uh, Jeff. Well, I think I think we're we're missing part of her discussion that she gave on TV, which is that he. Uh, forced her to be kissed oh I, I, we didn't see that in the photo yeah. Wait, I didn't hear that. no that was oh. in that was in the act that they were doing on stage yeah she was in this act yeah and and then, uh and he wrote the act and oh, yeah. they were supposed to kind of look like they're kissing and whatever and she was kind of against that and he goes, no, come on, this is what they're going to laugh, and, and it's going to be good. And yeah. then she said that he actually kissed her, and that actually he stuck her tongue in her throat. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, so you know, when people kiss during, during a show... Uh, you know, there's there's angles that you can use that it looks real, but it it really isn't, and you remain a professional. Well, there is a, well, maybe, there, there is some so question. Maybe both of them are bad actors. There but is this some, is not when they were on the airplane. Yeah, this is on okay. stage. This is on so stage. So there was more than one incident, is what you're saying? Yes, this is something that happened the day before, or was this like like hours before. Hmm. Ah, that's interesting. I thought it was just the one. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, how are you? Where, hey, where are you? Rob? Where Rob's driving tonight? He's. Uh, hey, Brian. Oh. How are you, Brian? Where are you driving from, uh, 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 Rob? Dulles oh. Airport home. Dulles oh, Airport been there. home. Been there, yep. done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it when people are in their cars driving and they're b being part of the show because you see stuff going on in the background and, you know. Yeah. Uh, put on red light. Yeah. Dulles Airport <laughs> used to be out in the middle of nowhere. And oh, now yeah. they are shit right up to it now. When I, was, when I lived in Houston, nowhere. Texas, uh, the Houston Airport was 75 miles outside of Houston. And now it's almost in the middle of town. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so it, 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 this is what it's George Bush International, right? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, what is uh, the, I, I, the, I the airport, the airport in, in Dallas, in uh, oh, okay. uh, no, in, in Houston. Houston. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yes, Jeff. I just want to clarify that when she talked about the kissing and that her thoughts and her discussion was not as clear as it was more about uh, the picture. When yeah. she said she never saw that picture until she went home. Yeah. Because remember the oh, way... So she she had, had no idea. She was no, being interviewed. No, the film had to be processed. Right. A couple right. days later. Those were the days, folks, when you had to process film. Yeah. When she was being interviewed by Tucker Carlson, didn't she start crying at that point? Uh, and uh, they, they cut... Uh, they cut off the uh, interview. Sorry, that part I didn't. Say. I don't know. She would have cried because I don't think she had Gloria well, Allred as an, as a, as a lawyer. No, I saw her cry. No, let's 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 get back to the pedophile because that's serious. I mean, that is uh, we see, don't, we're we're don't let guy, run around. You're calling the guy a pedophile on the suspicion of a mall cop, you know. No, uh, no. No, no, we're calling the guy a pedophile based upon the women have come forward, the ages that they were, the ages that he was, that makes him a pedophile. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe. But, you know, this this was also, what, 30 years ago? I don't care. I would have made him a pedophile. No, but he wasn't, <laughs> and he's not a pedophile. Wait a minute. Uh, Rob, were you trying to say something? Uh, no, it's just that what does 30 years ago have to do with it? 
Well, you know, yeah, it, it, he might have had a proclivity time. that he was marching around the mall. Yeah. But, you know, no, uh, in 30 Come years, on, his life has changed. Don't people change their lives? Oh, you mean no, the guy not the No, oh, not him. He's oh, no, not guy. him because he's a Republican. Has, 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 oh, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter, Phil. Pedophiles are pedophiles. They don't get better. Well, no, they don't. And we do a pedophile, uh, so, and he raped somebody or, or touched them or did something, other than cruising the mall because he was just a 30-year-old horny guy uh, who might have been looking to meet people and, or talk to people. That's like Woody to you. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. look, oh. Phil, Phil, apparently... If they banned him from the mall, and, and and Renee is right, how terrible do you have to be to get banned from a mall? Well, you know, maybe, I don't know. The only person I know that can be banned from a mall is George Clooney. Thank you. I'll be here all night. Uh, and Alex, scary. that was going to be my point. Yeah. What if she had been in this skit with... George Clooney. Yeah. Would we be talking about this now? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Bree, if you can do it, Bree, turn on your camera. I don't know if you have a camera available right now. Uh, I can't right now. I'm just waking up. Oh, I see. Okay. We don't want to see the bags yeah. under your eyes. But today, anyway. today is uh, my off day. Bree is calling from Dubai. Okay. Uh, but it's actually our weekends. Now? Dubai. Right. Dubai. Dubai. We can start on Friday here. We're off on Friday. They're off on Friday. Okay. Well, it, it, well, let's see here. It's not, it's not Friday anywhere here in the United States right now. So welcome to the future, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that would be so good. Um, uh, uh, no, we're talking about the uh, the. Uh, did you hear about the Steve Franken flap, Bree? Uh, Al Franken. Al Franken. Al Franken. Yeah. What did I what did I say? Steve Franken. Yeah. yeah. Alex, this is not even news. God, I'm going back is, to you know a uh, yeah. whole other era with Steve Franken. Let's this... talk about the Republicans what they want to do to the teachers. Well, wait a minute. Let's take one thing at a time here. I I, I know what I wanted to do to some of my teachers. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, did you hear about the so, Al Franken flap, uh, yeah. Bree? Of yeah, I did before uh, I went to bed last night. And what did you what did you I think? I just don't think it's news. I just don't think it's news. Right, right. Uh, but Maybe. I'm sure there are a lot of right wingers out there and Republicans who would like to make it as much news as is humanly possible. Well, yes. If I'm any example, yeah. Uh, I didn't think it was news. Okay, good for you, Phil. You know, I just I, it was juvenile. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff, I think a lot of women who are not Republicans do not like this. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the new standard, so to speak. And it doesn't mean that every woman has to agree with every other woman, but a lot more people are, uh, or women are uh, upset by by any of these things. Yeah, Not I don't know if we're upset or you guys are just are are we just getting our voice? No, the level of tolerance has changed. Uh, uh, there is a yeah. Uh, yeah. you know the set point for being upset is so low uh, that uh, it, it takes so little to piss people off right now. They're super sensitive. We, we, oh, we would all like to thank Donald Trump for making the bar against women to be something. Well, no, no, the bar, the, bar, the bar was low all along. It's just that it was tolerated for the longest amount of time. Now right. it's become a... Maybe a, the fad is a bad term to use, but it's been uh, the, 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 the zeitgeist of, uh, of the day, the zeitgeist to uh, find this objectionable and to suddenly come out against people who may have harassed you. And at the time, uh, we have to go back and look at the times. And, and my feeling is, and can we use this as a barometer? Uh, if it was a crime, let's say Roy Moore, uh, uh, in how many years ago did that take place? 30, I think. 30 years ago. Would it be a crime today or would the statute of limitations run out? And, and, I, I think there's a statute of limitations on this. Yeah, out. so if, like, if the statute of limitations is run out, do we then not bring up that particular incident? 
I'm just asking well, the question. I'm not saying it's so. I think we should get Roy, Roy Moore and hang him up by his fucking balls. But, you know, yes, Jeff. Statute of limitations, does, I don't, you know, it, it's different it from every state. Okay? It doesn't not on murder. But, uh, right, but I think when you're talking about young uh, children, yeah, I think there is no limit to that. I, well, I, I, I was just asking. I mean, I, I, you know, what can you say, though? Alabama isn't the age of consent 11? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Well, but they're slower a- than, uh, you know. Uh, and then you have these women that, um, that uh, they get some sort of special circumstance. They say they're, um, uh, what is it, uh, uh, that they're emancipated. And uh, well, no, they, 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 they in, order, in order to get emancipation, you have to go into a court of law <laughs> and get that, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know anything about this, Rob, about the emancipation thing? No, emancipated no. minor. I think, so, I, no. I think I think you do have to go to court on that. Yeah. To stand in front of a judge to be de- in- declared an emancipated emancipated yes. minor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, who, who are we? Wait a minute, what, I, what is this over here? I see a whole bunch of stuff that I don't understand. Do you, what is that? What is, what is that? What? It's, it's Do you think there's something bigger going on with everybody just... Under, it seems like the since Trump's been in office, you've had all these crazy things happening now with the media. Everything seems like, you know, between the outings and the harassment. I'm just wondering if there's something more afoot. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, emancipation would allow uh, uh, underage sexual activity. It just uh, is a matter of uh, uh, a legal mechanism which frees the minor from parental control, and uh, and and they're freed from any uh, uh, responsibility. But that doesn't make them fair game for sexual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're, they're, it, it's more a financial. Uh, issue than a yeah. uh, 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 Renee has her hand up. Renee, in some states, all you have to do is, and he said it, and you guys didn't pay attention to it, but he said it. In some of these shithole states in the United States, all he had to do was to ask one of his the parents, and he said it. I didn't do it without getting permission from the mom uh, from the mom before I did it. And that means she relinquished those rights of that child to that man, and it is allowed in that shithole state that they call Alabama. At 14? Oh, in the state of Virginia, Rob, and your fucking state at this point in time, if you have an 11-year-old girl and you take her to your jackass church and some 50-year-old man rapes that girl... That the the mom and dad of that little girl can turn over that little girl's rights and she has to marry that man. She has to bear that child and she has to live with that man and take care of him. So you have an 11 year old girl that is being forced to give birth, being forced to be raped and being forced to marry a man that that their parents had chosen for her or and or not. Boy, this sounds like a. Uh, yeah. That sounds. It just sounds like a bad Brett Ratner movie. The age yeah. consent uh, in Alabama. It says mm-hmm. it's incredibly, incredibly important in Alabama. An individual who is 19 or years or older and has sexual contact with someone who is younger than 16 but older than 12 has committed sexual abuse. Well, no, it's the same thing. In it's the same thing in yeah, uh, in California. Uh, if you are, let's say, you're a 16 year old boy. And you have sex with your 14-year-old girlfriend. Now, we don't see much wrong with that because it's, they're two, basically they're minors, right? The boy can be found guilty of, uh, of statutory rape. The girl cannot. Uh, but the, the, ridiculous. In this case, uh, the age is 19. Uh, so an individual who is 19 or older yeah. who has sexual contact with someone who yeah, is Yeah, but they're younger. saying that someone who's 18 or younger... 
uh, is not going to be held responsible. What I'm saying is in California, at least I don't know if it's true any longer, but it was when I was growing up, if you were a 16-year-old kid having sex with a 14-year-old girlfriend, which you're both minors, the boy can be charged with statutory rape because he had sex with a girl under the age of, of, of uh, so 18. It, it, it appears in Alabama that the age of consent is 16 from, from what I'm reading here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if, you're, if, if they have parents, if they're underage and their parents say they can do X, Y, and Z, and when he went over there to ask the mom if he could date her and she said yes, it doesn't matter what the little girl wants. Hmm. I, I don't think that's true. Uh, if the yeah, little girl is being saying, taken against her, her uh, that's still rape. Uh, you know. <laughs> well, if your parents are are just selling it, you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Your parents can't sell <laughs> you. Uh, that's that's illegal, too. I mean, we were just talking about the law in the state of Virginia. <laughs> well, that, that's well I was talking law. about Alabama. Commonwealth. And, uh, yeah. And well, uh, I wanted to know what the age of consent was and what would happen to someone that had uh, underage sex. And it seems as though as long as the one of the participants is over 16 and the other participant is, uh, yeah. is, yeah. is over that. Okay, all right, all right. Enough, enough of that. You know, yeah. Belaboring that. Um, I got this from Tim earlier today, and uh, you should be interested in this. Breaking his silence on Alabama's embattled Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate, Donald Trump, warned on Wednesday that dumping Roy Moore could start a dangerous trend of believing women. So said Steve Bannon. I, I he said that? I, I, no, I think we need to be very careful here, Trump told reporters. This is not just about Roy Moore. This is about our country deciding that we are going to start believing women, something we've never done before. It sounds like it was taken out of context. This is a very dangerous road we're sound. heading down. Let me finish. Trump cautioned that if instituted, a new practice of believing women would totally destroy the system that the country already has in place. For years, we've had a system of believing men, he said. It's worked very well, and it's done a great job. He said that he was considering a number of measures to stem the tide of women's credibility, including an executive order banning women from giving believable accounts to the press. That's something we're looking into, he indicated. He sounds like a great man. For... What do you it think? It sounds of, like what, something for Snow. Well, uh, the fact is, on the very top of it, this is from the New Yorker, in very small letters it says, satire from the Borowitz Report. Oh, okay. But I had you believing it for a minute, yeah, didn't I? You said it was out of context, but you didn't not believe it. Well, because it's, if it's out of context, it's no. But twisted. this wasn't out of context. This was a total, total fake news. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I I said uh, uh, the other just earlier today, if uh, if this is the way. Things get inter inter interpreted. If Trump ran into a burning building and saved two black infants, the oh. left would interpret that as and, and, oh, and dragged them and took them out of the building, saved their lives. The left would interpret it as Trump throws black infants out of out of their home. Yeah. I mean, boy, you went a long way to get that it's one nice. going. Well, you know, but that's that's the that's the thing. You know, you, you know, if, if he went into a burning that. building, the left would interpret it as you know he threw them into the street uh, and threw them out of their homes. Just the sheer fact that you said Trump was running was made the <laughs> whole thing bullshit. Trump couldn't run anyway. That's what I'm saying. You started off from the wrong foot. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mike, don't call the. Uh, you know, yeah. the okay. Wait a minute, Jeff. 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 Jeff, Jeff has his. Uh, Jeff has his hand up, and he's waving like crazy. I didn't say it. I said. The oh, that, how you that I knew that that was not from Trump. Yeah. Is because he could never articulate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and how well written, and and it would never come out of his crazy no. mouth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not enough believe me's in there. Yeah, there yeah, go. yeah. And enough, it's better than you expected. And and you couldn't bring the writer to say like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Never written it. And then, of course, you know, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, George H. W. Bush has been accused of, of 
of oh, patting yeah. somebody's yeah. ass. Yeah, you know, it just goes on and on. And you know, oh, another thing. You know why that couldn't have been Trump's statement? Why? It was longer than 140 characters. Yeah. Well, well, no, he no. It said he gave, you know he said he gave it to the press. He stated uh, it to the press. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me bring up another thing here. This is interesting. We we mentioned last night that uh, uh, um, Sinclair stations look, you know, there are some uh, congressmen and senators who are looking into having the FCC investigate them and not give them, for instance, they want to get uh, the Tribune station in Chicago, as an example, uh, WLS, and um, uh, they want them to deny that. Because it really would put them way over the amount of stations that it is considered proper for any one organization to own in this country. Well, I it thought two thousand was, was no. It, 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 this would make them somebody hit them some something like seventy nine percent of the entire country would be covered by Sinclair stations, where the rule of thumb uh, is that it be um, uh, I think something like thirty nine percent. So what? Where is uh, iHeart at in the in the? Uh, in, well, in that's the radio. Thing. They're not up so, that high. They're not up radio. That, but that's radio. Uh, this is television. But uh, it's not a law anymore, Alex. No, no, no. no there, the FCC has stated. You know, there is a certain uh, in each market you can own an, any number of stations as long as you don't own more than a certain percentage of the stations in a given market. Get what I'm saying? So, so there is a rule about percentages. Okay. Um, so, so you, are you saying that um, Sinclair is trying to buy? Because don't they own uh, WGN? Oh, WGN is no GN. To, GN is what they're trying to buy. They ha, they don't own it yet. They oh, okay. they've applied for the license. Oh, okay, okay. They're trying to the transfer of license. And and these congressmen and senators are trying to prevent it, saying that it would give them too much power in this country. And uh, what power they do have, they use very irresponsibly, and uh, I, I think they have a right to worry, okay? And WGN is a super Are there station. any Republicans yeah. barking? But now I'm going to hit you with something here that is being proposed by the FCC, who, by the way, is doing away with, is trying to do away with, uh, what's it? Uh, 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 net neutrality. Net neutrality. Here's the latest thing. I want to see what you feel about this. In a key vote today, the Federal Communications Commission voted three to two to allow television broadcasters to adopt next generation TV technology, clearing the way for a highly targeted TV ads along the lines of those currently prevalent on the Internet. That means if you're watching a TV show, you may not be getting the same commercials that your neighbor is getting because somehow you have been targeted as uh, to get a certain kind of uh, advertising. Uh, that's the way it works on Facebook. That's the way it works on yeah. Facebook and so on. And they're, they're suggesting this uh, for television. The Internet, protocol ba the Internet protocol based technology will enable audiences such as ultra high def broadcasters and mobile viewing. But the FCC's move is controversial for a few reasons, including that it will also allow broadcasters to mesh some online data with TV viewing data for ad targeting purposes. I was wondering where they were getting the information from. Well, it, I <coughs> noticed. I noticed something are, very. I noticed something very. Are connected now. I noticed something very interesting when I was uh, out of town. I was in uh, in in Vermont. And uh, I decided that I wanted to watch some programs on, like, Fox or whatever, uh, Fox television. So I accessed them by going to the Fox television site, and then I started watching them. And they would. what happens when you do that online, uh, they break for commercials, right? And you can't go fat past the commercials. You have to watch the commercials. I suddenly noticed the commercials were for local Vermont advertisers, so they're doing that targeting already online. So if you watch a TV yeah. show on, on, on Fox or you watch an NBC feed or whatever, you're getting the local commercials. But if I go back to New York and I plug it in and watch the same thing, I'm going to get New York-based commercials. So this that's, is what they're... That's they're, not hard to do on the Internet. How do you do that on broadcast? Well, apparently, apparently uh, this is possible with uh, the um, um, high definition, you know, the really H, the uh, ultra high definition broadcasts now, that there may be enough uh, bandwidth on there to do this sort of thing. Uh, and, but how you detect it, you know, how they detect me 
right. it, I, I don't really totally understand, but the fact that they can, in spite of the fact that I don't know how they do it, is kind of scary. You know, I mean, I understand there's certain things on the Internet I have to put up with for getting the Internet for free. But, you know, to have television force uh, ads down my throat uh, of, of things that are targeted to me, eh, that the television people having that thing doesn't, doesn't make me feel comfortable. Yes, Mike. On DirecTV, I noticed they're showing local ads on DirecTV, which I didn't, you know, I looked at some car dealership. I know. They've been okay, doing that a long time. Have they? I didn't know that. Yeah, DirecTV's been doing that a long time. So if DirecTV can do but it, I see, guess. They, they're not, but DirecTV isn't, isn't doing it by location. They're doing it by your address because all the local, I have DirecTV and I'm using my brother's address so I could get the New York channels. All of the local right. program, all the local spots I see are New York spots. I'm not seeing any Virginia spots, so they're not able to detect my location. If they were, they probably wouldn't uh, allow me to do what I'm doing. You know, when I was uh, driving around in Miami over the weekend, uh, I noticed I was getting uh, t uh, radio commercials on the radio uh, from a station in Long Island, uh, and I, I, you know, I don't know why, but that station in Long Island was. You know, being received on a normal over-the-air uh, terrestrial radio station. Was it, in Miami. At, was it? Was it at night? No, it was during the day. It was it? Was it on That's AM or FM? Just a, a, it was an FM FM station. Hmm. Probably just the uh, a, a sister station that they're 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 broadcasting over. You know, they're just rebroadcasting. Yeah, that's the possibility, but I, it was it was surprising that every you know it was it was definitely like I was listening to a Long Island station, but I was in Miami. It, it is winter in Florida, so it, anybody who's been on the planet for I don't know a hundred years knows that a lot of New York City kind of flies down to Florida or drives down to Florida in the winter time. Not FM. Yeah, these may be these may Not be. FM. I have the explanation. These may be Jewish FM stations. How is that? Yeah, they moved to Florida for the winter. Snowbirds. Yeah. Snowbirds. Yeah. That's the day I think they call them. Snow station. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. I've run FM, out of stuff FM to talk FM won't about. skip down to Florida. No, it was definitely no, not skip. No, FM won't skip that far. It, it was definitely not skip, it, but I was, you know, just, I said, well, you know, I actually didn't even want to listen to it. Uh, but there was only so many stations that were programmed in the car, and I was having trouble figuring out how to. <laughs> By the way, look at uh, look at Bree, Bree, look at Bree's feed. He's actually got a picture of his window. Is that his window? Uh, he's, yeah, he's not like, there right now. He's probably taking a shower yeah. or something. No, no, I'm here. Oh, you're there. Uh, then what are you? What yeah, are we I was looking? Brushing my teeth. Oh, oh I, I was see. Brushing my teeth. What are those little designs there, Bree? Uh, is that a oh. daughter's window or? It's it's actually on my window. <laughs> um, I, these were just uh, some stickers that I got at uh, a Japanese home store, oh. and it's just it looks it makes the window look like a stained glass window. Oh, I see. And it, it's like a Pennsylvania Dutch if you saw the whole thing. Oh, okay. Kind of a thing, but uh, and then what you're seeing is a little bit of my my porch my balcony and then outside let me let me let me blow this up for people so they can so they can see what we're yeah, talking they're doing about. something and i'm not sure what it is if we take a it's a crate isn't it yeah yeah that's a crate. I don't know. let me let me go out and you can tell me what they're doing here is the okay. exterior of your building like a stucco no it's all like kind of concrete <laughs> oh okay okay yeah, can tell me what, yeah. oh, uh, there we go oh wow what are they doing I don't know. Oh, I know what they're doing. They're setting up a, a, a crane, one of those high uh, tower cranes. Oh, show us, show us those tall buildings there. Look at, look at this in Dubai. These buildings. Well, Looks you're, like you're trying to grab somebody by the wait pussy. A minute, you're frozen right now. Trump's, yeah, you're, you're a little bit frozen. Here, oh, but look at those oh, wow. buildings. <laughs> yeah, go, go up on that one building right there, right in the center. No, in the center. Uh, you just passed it. Uh, it was a skyscraper. There's a big skyscraper there. Uh, but we're we're, we're, we're getting we're getting kind of uh, in, in, intermittent signals from you because of the uh, 
the, you know, you're not, probably not too near your Wi-Fi. Just go up. Just go up. Show us up that building. It, no, no, yeah. not that the one. Sky yeah, so I got to go back inside to hear you. It's loud. Oh, what it's I was going to say is we that tall building. It looked like a very tall building that you had there. Oh, no. These these buildings around here are actually kind of small really? uh, compared to the other ones. Oh, well, that looked you like know, a pretty... One of, days, one of these days, I'm going to get up early and go to... Uh, you know, Burj Al Arab or Burj Khalifa and, uh, you know, try to stream back to you. But you say, I don't know. My... Bree, did you say the building last time, uh, one of the last times we spoke, uh, the building that had the fire, uh, a residential fire, uh, was a skyscraper, was across the street yeah. from you? Uh, it's not too far. It, it's it's maybe uh, like, I'd say two blocks. Mm. Have they had any more incidents like that? Yeah, they have. Uh, really? It's a big issue. Uh, you probably heard the one in Great Britain uh, about the the cladding, the tower uh, yeah. cladding. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out we got we got a lot of that here too. So they have to go through and figure that out. Yeah, they're going to have to take it all down, and then they're going to either put something else up or redesign the front of the structure. That's going to be a big issue. Well, oh boy. Uh, 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 let me see. Was that, that was that, that, that was Tony? Yeah, that was Tony. That, that, that was Tony farting. The criminals are out again. It sounds like. Right. Um, uh, I'm the one on the road, and you hear more cars <laughs> by Tony. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no so, did anybody have an idea about what they were doing out there? I can't even identify. What they're structure. doing is setting up. They're setting up a crane. Yeah. One of those, oh, uh, okay. those great, those high piles, uh, tower cranes. Oh, okay. That's what they're, that's what they're setting up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, we, we, you aren't in the frame, are you, Bree? No. Okay. I'm, I'm still not uh, ready for prime time. Okay. So you've got your camera m mounted somewhere, s sitting somewhere, so that we're seeing. No, well, this is my iPad. Oh, so it's, it's, you just kind of got it, so it, it's looking out the window, right? Yeah, it's it's on a little stand. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, because it was just really it. still, and so I was wondering if your picture was frozen, but I guess not. Oh no! Um, well, occasionally you can see people walking there in the in the background. Yeah. yeah. So my my question, I, I guess the big question that that's been the big question all night long is, how much more do we apply yesterday's morality to today's morality? Retro. In other words, is is is, is, is morality is here's a good, here's the way to put it is 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 morality retroactive? You know. With the changing times, yes, uh, uh, Renee. Was it against the law then? Yes. Is it against the law now? Yes. Well, then we're the not law. doing and Then it's not a morality <laughs> issue. Taking a picture uh, on on a plane uh, as as a joke of somebody sleeping, you know. But no, I, I'm talking about the pedophile. I'm talking about the stuff that is so really you're calling him a pedophile. Don't don't ask yeah. Renee because she'll probably be more forgiving to Al Franken than she would be to a lot of other people because he is somebody we politically agree with, right, Renee? No, yeah, he really no, doesn't do anything. Look at the degrees of what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're okay, the degrees so, of what okay, we're talking about. Okay, so let me, let me ask you, let me ask you as a woman. Okay, so where does Louis C.K. fit? I don't understand why those women didn't laugh at him, but I, okay. Yeah, I don't understand so, why they said yeah, why they didn't say, no, don't take it out. Or why so they didn't turn around and walk thing. out of the room. They all seem to sit there and watch. And, and but, you know how it was going to end? Pamela Alden uh, had... Adlin. Had, you know, Adlin is her name. Yeah. She had some racy kind of uh, uh, sexual uh, goings on uh, in, that, in that show. So I don't think she's a, a wallflower... Uh, and uh, well, why just, because, just because she portrays herself. something on television doesn't reflect on her I, morality. I understand, but sure. she, you know, if, if that was the kind of comedy and the kind of thing that she was doing that she, that she caused herself to walk away from the Louis C.K. deal and and separate herself from that. Uh, well, she, then, well, here's where here's where I'm a little bothered with Pamela Adlin. Okay, uh, I'm shocked by the behavior of Mr. C.K. Right, is kind of like uh, the inspector in Casablanca saying gambling in Casablanca. Uh, I'm 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 appalled. And then somebody comes up to him and says, "Here are your winnings, inspector." You know, I mean, Pamela Adlin for years has been partners with Louis C.K. She helped write his uh, his show Louis. 
I think she may have directed some episodes. She was on it. Then, then he did better things with her. She has been almost involved in every Louis C.K. project that has been. The show she, he did on HBO, where he it was a, done before a live studio audience. His wife was Pamela Adlin. Okay, so she's worked with this guy for a long time, and she's How, appalled by me. what she heard when right. I've talked to people in the that comedy business who said this was common knowledge. Right. So, and, so and, I mean, I, come reason, on, Pamela, well, you're being... The only reason I mentioned the Californication situation is that that writing... Oh, that, you were talking you know, about Californication. Right, but in, in that... Uh, in that thing no but what you know, all i'm saying all i'm saying phil is it doesn't matter what you play on tv to begin with secondly yeah. what i'm yeah, saying is is that i find it a little ingenuous of her to suddenly throw uh louis ck to the wolves mm. when in fact for years she's been in bed with him uh working wise i'm yeah. not saying sexually right. but working wise and he's been responsible for some of the better things that have happened in her career yeah, you know, so she's being a little ingenuous and not uh, uh, enough of a pal to say I'm very upset by it. I'll tell you, uh, if you want to see, do we good, really know the whole uh, story? Uh, well, do, if you want to see a good comment on Louis C.K., uh, I think oh. you can watch the latest Sarah Silverman show on on Hulu. What? And I was going to play the thing tonight, but I and then my computer went wacko and I didn't have time to do it. But she made a statement in which she was almost crying. She's saying Louis's a friend of mine. And I'm sorry to hear this kind of thing has been going on. He certainly never did this sort of thing to me. And, and she went on to say how, you know, how sad she was that this had happened to him. Uh, but that, you know, she under, also understands that uh, as a woman, she can't countenance this kind of behavior. So it was kind of a thing where she felt in a way guilty about throwing him to the wolves. And on the other hand, felt that she had to because it would be wrong for her not to take a stand on it. It's a very so interesting. Are you huh? So are oh. you saying are you saying that it's not if you have a friend and your friend has a sickness or something like that, like this, because it's a sickness everywhere, like this stuff happens. And what's that? What is that? And no, no, don't, don't, no, don't play it. Don't play it. OK, please. I'll, ha I'll have you play it after Rob has finished talking, but not while somebody else is talking. Go ahead. What I was saying is what I was saying is, I mean. People who are friends to people who have problems, do you just abandon your friends or do you support your friends? You may not agree with what they did. You may not, you know, but that's what friends do is they support each other. People, people falter. I'm not saying he should, if you don't like him as a comedian, you're not a friend. But if she's a friend, what do you do? You just walk yeah. away from your friends? Well, let's. Well, if, your let, if they're doing something that bad, why would you stick with them? Well, no, but you stick with well, people. You stick with friends of yours if they're alcoholics, and you try and get them help. Yeah. You know, and I would say in the case of Louis C.K. with this behavior, it's it's akin to alcoholism. You know. Absolutely. And what? And let's just say for a moment he was an alcoholic and he was drunk when he did this. You'd probably forgive it. You'd probably say he needs yeah, help. Have no recollection. Yeah. yeah, you'd say he needs I help. I understand any. I, I understand any woman who is a fan of Louis C.K. is telling him, fuck you, I'm done, I'm not watching you. I don't know you personally, I'm consuming your comedy. But friends? I don't know. I. That's weird to me. Hey, Alex. Yeah. I don't know the whole thing with the Louis C.K. other than what you guys are talking about. What I'm confused with is, is like you said, he, if these two women go up in the room with this guy, Louis, so, I think there were three of them. Why did they just leave then? Did they know what they were saying? Well, I, I, they I, walked I, in? Like, well, did he forcibly say they have to stay? No, he he they asked them. He he them. asked for permission first. He said, "Do you mind if I pull out my 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 penis or dick or whatever?" He said. <laughs> And and even Louis and says, yeah, I did ask him. Uh, I did ask him for permission. Well, apparently, none of these women said, N I, I mind. You know, and they say, well, it's because that he was a powerful anything. guy. He was a powerful guy in the business, and they didn't want to say no to him. I find that a little. What? If if you're that that um, uh, weak willed, I mean, come on, you could have. You had maybe they you, the you, job. You. you Maybe they have a sick kid at home. Maybe, maybe need the help. Maybe, maybe they could still turn around and walk out because they can always go to HR for the TV show and complain. Yeah. yeah we, and say I was getting fired for all the wrong reasons. You can do that these days, Renee. 
You don't yes, have to put up with that shit. That. So he didn't force them to stay. So he actually asked them. Well, they, they say they say they were forced to stay because they felt that their jobs were in jeopardy. Well, they weren't in jeopardy because every every production, every studio has HR, human resources. You have to hire an HR person. Yeah. And all you'd have to do is go to HR, make a complaint, and if anybody tried to fire you, you've got that job for life. You know? Yeah, but you also you also get blacklisted. You're right. You're protected by HR, but you'd be black. You know, if you're trying to be a success in a certain career, that could be the death knell to you. Right. So yeah, it, you're protected. They can't get they can't fire you, but that might be the last thing you ever do. You know something? I I I can't say I know Lou uh, really uh, that, I, that I knew Louis well, but I certainly knew him enough that he's been on, was on my program many times in San Francisco. And the guy I met didn't seem like a guy who would necessarily take out repercussions on somebody who didn't want to see him pull out his dick. Okay. Well, why is it that I should be something that's right? What would you say, uh, Renee? Do you think it's right in. Oh, wait a minute. First, Rob. Yes, Rob. Do you think it's right that a, that somebody in a business sense asked yeah. that question? I don't. I just I don't, cut them in. It's completely. The it's completely wrong, Rob. But that's not. That's not the point okay, here. Good. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I noticed uh, to begin with that. Uh, is that you? Do you have your hand up there, uh, 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 Bree? Yes. Yeah. Alex, uh, who is Louis C.K.? <laughs> what does the C.K. stand for? I don't know, to tell you the truth. Calvin Klein. <laughs> Calvin Klein. Uh, and Louis C.K. is a comedian. He's been uh, he, he, he's done very well in the comedy business as a producer when? of TV shows. Now, he had a show called Louis, which was very popular on FX, got many... So uh, he must be recent, no, like within well, the last decade. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have and, no idea who he is. Well, he's been around for years. I mean, he was around when I was doing my show in San Francisco and was a guest on the show, but he didn't have the kind of following. In those days, what he was most famous for, he directed a film uh, for Chris Rock called, I can't remember the name, it was a weird name, and uh, he, he, was, he directed a few movies, and he... You know, he's always been dabbling in vi in film. And then he started doing his own shows. Now he, he had like four shows on FX that he produced that were, you know, he was he was pretty much a biggie in this business now. You know, okay. on the comedian side. Yeah. But he didn't ask, you know, in this case, he didn't ask anybody to blow him or to fuck him or whatever. Just look at his pee pee while he jerked off. Robin which, Williams had a proclivity. He kept touching his, his penis or his crotch. Uh, all the time. Now, would that have been considered uh, a? No, but that was part uh, of the. Uh, it was part of his act, so he didn't. No, it wasn't. It was a habit. I don't remember that habit. Oh, and I certainly knew Robin a lot better than you did. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, he was. He was always touching himself. Well, I'm yeah, always, Alex, I think you know, that this I, is the what. This is the frame du jour. It, you're right. It's it's just what. Um, is happening now and and a month from now we're going to be talking about a new something or other yeah because you know this one will will, will sort of peter out well let's hope it doesn't and, let's hope it doesn't peter out to the extent that we forget the lesson we've learned you know yeah. that this is a wrong behavior I think we will forget i think we do forget and i think trump is the perfect example of how we forget well, I mean, we certainly aren't holding him to account for all the claims that have been made against him about sexual uh, uh, misdeeds, uh, mis, uh, as it were. And uh, nobody holds it against him that he got rid of a wife when she, you know, he no longer needed her and got a younger one, you know, and then got rid of that one and got another younger one. You know, and, they, and, and uh, each one progressively became a worse bimbo than the one before them. You know, uh, uh, Ivanka was a, uh, was a pretty smart woman. Uh, um, Marla That's Maples right. was Marla not Maples. not as much not. so, and and Ivana is just you know, uh, uh, Ivana. Excuse me, uh, Mar 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 Malaria is just another uh, another bimbo. Tell you the truth, Marla Maples was brilliant. She really? married Donald Trump. <laughs> and, no, and she was also she may have been brilliant, but she was something else, tasteless. Gold digger. Gold well, digger. Yeah, you know, I mean, she wasn't. Yeah, she there's was gold no digger. reason for anybody to have any desire to fuck Donald Trump if he didn't have money. 
Well, you know, when he was younger, he wasn't a bad looking guy. He wasn't a good looking guy. Oh, oh, Jesus. And and if and if you look at his sons, they're good looking guys. Oh, come on. No, no. By what standard? By what standard? They look sleazy. Yeah. Oh, oh talking about that, uh today Trump uh overcame a Obama era uh, uh, a situation where now you can take uh, trophies and ivory and things no, like you know, that. You, you can kill elephants and bring them back to the United States. No. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They, you know why he did oh, that, don't elephant. you? You know why he did that, don't you? No. For his son? His son goes out and kills, it goes out and kills animals for trophies. Isn't he a nice guy? Yeah, it's a real, real, real piece oh, of work. He kills well, elephants. You know, you know what they do on the elephant things is they cut the uh, they cut the tusks off while the elephants are still uh, oh, young. Oh no, no, so you got it, you got it wrong. You got it all wrong, Phil. Right. They cut the tusks off, but those are the authorities who cut the tusks off, so they won't right. kill the elephants. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it, 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 you know, it makes it so that yeah. people don't That's want it. the trophy. Yeah. Now, what is that That's you're holding up, Bree? What's that you're holding up? It's exactly what you're talking about. It's your what? The White House yeah. says the elephant. Oh, it's my cell. Uh, my cell phone has a news feed. Yeah. It's an it's an app called News Three Sixty. Uh huh. Oh wow. This is when he passed. Uh, oh, well, I. That's not a lucky uh, elephant because his trunk isn't up. Oh, you gosh, so this is what he had to do. Yeah, but um, there's one we're gonna get this done. So the things that we deemed were important, such as elephants <clears throat> and having illegal ivory and lions and tiger skins. No, you know, just I don't. I don't agree with that, and but I don't understand why he did it. There, there, For there his has, son, don't you understand? Have you, have you seen? Son. Wait a minute. Yeah. Haven't you seen? Son, haven't Bill. you seen the pictures of his son? With standing yeah, on the on the on the dead carcass of an elephant, right? But he's yeah, carcass in his home in London. Yeah, so he have to bring it back to the United States. Uh, you know, so if if you take a trophy and you happen There's to live in Germany or London, you know that trophy can come back with you. But in the United States, it's illegal. What does that headline say? Um, let me see. It's here. not just the United States that's illegal. There are other oh. ethical countries out there. That will not allow you to do the same thing. That's right. So it's not just us. Matter of fact, there's only a few carriers now that will allow you to bring carcasses back or or even illegal things like ivory. They won't even allow you on some airplanes. They won't allow you to bring that back. No carcasses? That'll keep me off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is that it, it's a terrible rule that he just passed. It's an executive order, really. I mean, yeah, somebody could. I, I'm not. I'm not in favor of uh, of that because, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I like, uh, you know, if somebody wants to hunt uh, or or something like so, that. By the know. way, by the way, it, let me just say, I've been wanting to say this for nights and for a couple of nights, and I've forgotten to say it. There is a reporter who I feel oh. very sad and sorry for over at NBC. She reports every night on the evening news. She's one of the, the reporters who goes out, and I can't remember her beat, maybe the White House or whatever. And her name is Casey Hunt. And I just feel so bad for her because as a young girl growing up, the names she must have been called, all they would have to do is go say to Casey Hunt, hey, Casey, and the rest would follow. <laughs> you know. And I look uh. at her every night and think, she probably was battered as a child by her by her schoolmates calling her Hasey cunt. So yeah. you know, you know, I used to walk home from school, and this this guy had a mailbox, and his last name was Fugger, and I always figured that he had a fight when he was a kid. Oh yeah, you know? oh yeah. You imagine listen, growing I, up with a name like Fugger. Listen, I had enough troubles just with a name, a name like Schwarzman for crying out loud. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. This has been a good show tonight. And boy, have we had a lot of people watching the TV feed tonight. I can't believe it. Uh, Phil Meyer, thank you so much for joining us. Jeff Stein, thank you. Uh, Anthony Magno, a big thank you to, uh, to Tony for his uh, participation in all of this. Uh, Bree, thank you from Dubai or Dubai, Dubai, uh, Dubai uh, or do something. And uh, 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 Mike, thank you. Renee, love hearing from you from Hawaii, by the way. And Rob Alfano, who is on the highways going home. Drive safely, Rob, and the rest of you and all of you. Give a 
big wave goodbye to everybody else, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our, uh, that's our citizens panel for tonight. Let me, uh, let me kill their feed here so that I can uh, uh, leave the lines open for the next show that follows, which happens to be the intersection with Jack and Amy. I'm back again tomorrow night, okay? And uh, at mid- oh, 1 o'clock this morning Eastern Time, it's going to be uh, uh, Connections. In the meantime, I'll be back tomorrow night for the final show of the week. I'll be here with uh, my uh, my girlfriend and wife, uh, girlfriend. And uh, if, as always, uh, and I say this in great honesty, if you see her, what the hell are you doing with her? Tell her I love her, okay? 